Hey, it's Sick Boy from the Gaming Analysis Collective. And the UN Broadband Commission has recently had a report published, as well as did a hearing, with regards to cyber violence for women online. Obviously online. Now, this in of itself, I don't really have a problem with. You know, I know they want to, they always want to talk about gendered violence and that kind of thing. They want to, to focus on women. And there are some things that really should be discussed. For example, and it's already illegal in most places, things like revenge porn. Things like where teenage girls commit suicide over the way they're treated online. That's bullshit and cruel. And anybody who bullies a child to suicide, you're a piece of fucking shit and deserve to suffer for it. But the people who have tagged along to this is what's made this newsworthy with regards to gaming. And those are Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian. They turned up and spoke at the UN. And some of the shit they had to say was just fucking remarkable. Let's just look at this quickly. Okay, first off, this is from Zoe Quinn. We need people who, to actually enforce their own terms of service, shut down bad actors and bad faith websites. There are individuals on services like YouTube that have made a living off of abusing people like Anita and I, who monetize this, who see the mobs, who, who aren't anonymous, who raise funds this way to continue attacking, stalking and harassing us, because it's a cottage industry at this point. Now let's be honest, we know exactly who they're talking about here. They're talking about the large profile YouTubers, people like Sargon of Akkad, people like Thunderfoot, and people like Monday Matt, and people who have got a Patreon and are earning money while discussing these matters. There are pl plenty of people who do it, there are some people who do it, and they earn good money from it. Funnily enough, having a Patreon about talking shit online doesn't seem to be a problem when you're pulling in, what, $4,000, I think it is, Zoe, for your ex outing you and then being called a knob on the internet over it. So I find it somewhat rich that you're getting money on the grounds that your ex-boyfriend that you treated like shit doesn't like you and people thought you were an arsehole because of it. Now, did you get some horrible shit sent to you on the internet? Yeah, you probably did, and for that, that's awful. I don't think that's very nice. However... Really? We're talking about 13 months on, you form some bullshit initiative with your drone money boyfriend who can't snap a DVD, and you antagonised people endlessly when, as I told you personally, over a year ago, when we discussed this, and I said, do you know what? Just go, you know, I've done some things I'm not proud of, but that's a private matter, I'm not talking about it, and fucked off. We wouldn't be here, would we? But thanks very much for not heeding my advice. I'm sure it's made you a lot of profit and made you some fame, but, you know, thanks a lot for turning gaming into an absolute shitstorm. Ta. Now, the second one comes from an Itzakis, and this is fucking priceless. I think it's important to recognise that harassment is, as someone has mentioned, not just what is legal and illegal. Really, that's actually what she said. Harassment is threats of violence, but it's also the day-to-day -day grind of you're a liar and you suck. Making all of these hate videos to attack us on a regular basis, and the mobs that come from those hate videos. Well, it would certainly help if you didn't lie so much, or just be ignorant. One of the two. You're either lying or ignorant, because hard, a lot of the stuff you say is just fucking mental. And also, don't suck so much. That would help me. You know, who are these people? Who are these people communicating with you, Anita? I find that quite interesting. Um, being as there's no comments on your videos, being as you don't even now voting except for on one to prove some kind of moot point. Uh, you block anybody who says anything negative towards you. You are as safe as safe can be, and no credible threat has ever been issued in your way. Because if it had, I think we'd have known about it. There would have been an attempt on your life. There would have been some violence perpetrated against you. No, no, no. What did you get? A Brazilian blogger wrote that he was going to shoot up a school and then you used that in the public eye to claim that you were harassed away from talking rather than the fact that you refused to accept that Utah had a concealed carry law and that you wanted the law to circumvent that because... for reasons, I guess. So, you know, ultimately you're making this out there. You're at the UN, Anita. You're at the fucking UN to talk about that people think you're full of shit and tell you so. If that's not an absolute concrete bit of proof that the patriarchy isn't fucking real, it's the fact that you can sit there at a UN commission and say, people say nasty things about me, that's harassment, 
even though it's legal, even though it's fine to speak about whatever you want to speak about, provided you're not hurting anybody, you can critique, you can discuss, but you can't apparently because it hurts your feels. And I'm very sorry, but your feels are irrelevant in comparison to the rights of other people. Sorry, that's how reality works. Now, it's not just about these two silly little piffling quotes from, frankly, very small people who are making a big fuss and making good money off being, frankly, intellectually deficient. But I went through this report uh, specifically for mentions about video games. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing because the, uh, that, that argument is for somebody else to make another day to analyse that information. I'm here to discuss the gaming aspect and discuss why gaming has been dropped into this, why Gamergate was specifically mentioned as harassment, the, the, the people who are listed on who's been harassed online, you had teenagers who've committed suicide and Zoe Quinn and Edith Sarkeesian and some celebrities who had pictures of their tits sent around the internet. So the tragedy is that it, this is marginalising real victims, but I'm not going to go into that. I'm now going to show you some of the report and I'm going to pick out the bits with regards to gaming and in particular one article that I am going to read in full um, because it's fucking ludicrous and it's so old a lot of you guys may never have heard of this article it's fairly um, well known in the anti-censorship anti-Jack Thompson circles so let's crack on with that then shall we right so here we have the report isn't that a spiffy little colour they've gone with? Isn't that a lovely little colour scheme. It's very nice, very nice. Cyber violence against women and girls, a worldwide wake-up call. And that's a report for the UN Broadband Commission for Digital Development Working Group on Broadband and Gender. Because when something's discussing gender, of course it only means women, because... I don't know, I don't know. Apparently gender just means women now. And you know, It's just code for saying it's women. So right, first off, let's go to page 16. More women play video games than ever before, but women who talk about video games on social media face criticism, harassment, even threats, while men largely don't. <laughs> men, men do not face criticism, harassment or threats. They just don't. They just don't. It doesn't happen. It's not real. People have not received death threats. People have not been sent dead animals in the mail. Men have not been swatted. I have not been criticised as a small-scale YouTuber. I've been criticised plenty. I've been harassed plenty, funnily enough, by women in most cases, or just arsehole trolls who I managed to out-troll because they were weak fucking source. I mean, they talk about this as well, we look at this, read this again. But women who talk about video games on social media face criticism, harassment, even threats. So, criticism is the primary thing here, criticism is the most frequent thing here, that is, that is deemed appropriate for a UN report that women are criticised when men largely aren't when men largely aren't don't be fucking ridiculous and then the Internet Advertising Bureau reported in October 2014 is 50% uh, 2% of the gaming audience is made up of women this statistic gets banded around and I am not going to bother analysing it because I think it's a worthless statistic we don't know this data this data is pointless you don't know, for example, people what the people really want to know, if they want to do meaningful analysis, you want to know specifically what are the demographics of people currently playing Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, FIFA and Madden, because basically those are the major cash cows in the gaming industry. So if you're looking to pander to an audience that's spending money, that's who you're looking to go for. If you're looking for cow clickers, who's using cow clickers? To say 52% of gaming was made for women, that's like saying, well, 80% of people watch TV, so how do we market to those people? Okay, let's move on to page 36, where they're talking about an interesting example of a soft tool used by government to discourage violence against women. Though ICT is being proposed, the government of Sweden is to form a seal which indicates whether video games are gender friendly. By which, again, they mean, do women come to harm? Do women come to harm? Now, I think it's fair to say the vast amount of video games... People are coming to harm. Most video games have some form of violence. Even cutesy twee ones have cartoony death, you know, platforms. Like Mario kills a load of Goombas. I mean, is that is that okay? Is that okay? I don't know. Apparently. Who knows? These things are baffling to me. I mean, it's all just all over the fucking place. 
Are they gender friendly? Are they gender friendly? Do they make women feel like they are not coming to any harm and they are protected and safe in this world? That's not what media is for. That'd be ridiculous. Seriously, if the next Call of Duty campaign had one prominent woman die in it, it's guaranteed they would go absolutely mental when the fact that the entire game is killing men. The entire game series is predicated on the death of men. And I don't want to get into this argument. It's a stupid argument. It's not an MRA argument. It's not a fucking feminism argument. It's a, it's not, this is stupid to say that you need a label on it to say, do women get hurt in this game, yes or no? I trust that adult women who want to play violent games are mature enough emotionally to handle fantasy violence occurring to someone that isn't them. For fuck's sake. This, this whole thing is off the fucking deep end. Okay, so let's move on to page 48. This is where it gets fucking insane. Core roots of mainstreaming violence. There's a widespread representative of VAUG, so I haven't mentioned that before, V-A-W-G, violence against women and girls. Could you have not come up, could you come up with something better that didn't sound, doesn't sound so much like VAUG? Or look so much like Vaj. I mean, come on. In mainstream culture. Including in contemporary and popular music, movies, the gaming industry, and the general portrayal of women in popular media. Recent research. Recent research. Remember that. Recent research. On how violent video games are turning children, mostly boys, into killing zombies. And also a part of mainstreaming violence. And while the presentation and analysis of this research is beyond the scope of this paper, which means... It means fucking nothing. The link to the core roots of the problem are very much evidence and cannot be overlooked. What problem? Are murders going up? No, they're going down. Are rips going up? No, they're going down. But that's arguable because we never know about 100% who uh, and how many have been reported and how many are real. It's, it's obviously a thing. Whereas murder is murder, assault is assault. It's very much easier to prove those things. So they're much better statistics. Uh, violent crime rates are going down. Violent video game consumption is going up. So, what problem? The problem that women are not 100% safe and 100% comfortable all of the time. That's the problem, isn't it? That's the problem. You are not safe to say whatever you want and do whatever you want without consequences. Well, I'm very sorry. That's not how reality works. Can we just get our big boy pants on and our big girl pants? Get them on. And act like fucking adults, please. Because if you think the world is safe, in general, the West is a generally very safe place. But you are not entitled to a world where you can come to no discomfort and no harm. Now, what was that reference where they're talking about the killing zombies, you may ask? And it's this thing. Right, this article is called Program to Kill, Video Games, Drugs and the New Violence. And this came out, recent, remember recent research, reprinted from fall, which is autumn if you are not in America, 2000. Okay, so let's read through this as we go, okay. Right. The murders of 13 students and teachers at Columbine High School in Littleton, Colorado on April 20th, 1999 shocked the world. These acts of murder by two young men from well-to-do families who cold-bloodedly shot fellow students and teachers and then killed themselves caused a wave of fear and soul-searching, a ripple throughout America. Yet Littleton was only the most notorious of the at least eight similar such incidents carried out by child killers. Manchurian children. <laughs> Manchurian children. Oh, the people of Manchuria. Again, they're brainwashing the children to go off and commit school shootings. Presumably, uh, in this case, the role of Manchuria will be taken by the Nintendo's machines. Who learn to play their deadly skills from video games? No. 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 You do not learn how to kill people from video games. 
Have you anyone who's anyone who's shot a gun? I'm sure will attest to the fact that the first time they fired a gun was nothing like firing a gun in a video game. It is a completely different thing. Now I have spoken to people who have served and retired soldiers who have said that they utilize methods to improve their competitive gameplay. So they have certain ways of moving, certain ways of aiming that helps them secure kills and wins in games. But that is nothing like the idea it's turning children in to killers and making them, getting them the skills to kill. I mean, that's, that's beyond stupid. The brutal acts of these children exemplify a new phenomena in the world. Yeah, new phenomena. It is the new violence, as Democratic presidential pre-candidate Lyndon LaRoche was first to precisely characterise it at the time. The new violence. Because violence, violent children have not existed before the 21st century, or in this case, the late 20th century. Dear God. Here comes, here comes the grandma sounding shit. It is the use of Nintendo-style games. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo style games. The UN published this in September of 2015. It is the use of Nintendo style games and related means to transform young children and adolescents, as well as law enforcement personnel, into samurai style programmed killers. <laughs> Do I even need to explain why that's fucking stupid? The child killers we have seen so far are only the first of what will be many more Nintendo killers. <laughs> the Nintendo killers! Look out! Pikmin's coming. Pikmin's gonna get ya. If we fail to recognise and stop the phenomenon. Right, 15 years on, how, how have we done? How have we got on? Had many problems? Have we had the Nintendo killers? Have they been off throwing their Pokemans and uh, murdering the children? Um, Mar now Marilyn Manson's not as popular as he once was. Has that stopped the killing? Now kids don't play Doom. Maybe Doom 4. Maybe they will play Doom 4. But, you know, the kids aren't playing the Dooms anymore. They're not playing the Nintendos so much. And, you know, maybe the Xboxes isn't as, aren't as bad as the Nintendos, but... Jesus fucking Christ. There's a pattern. Certain features which are common to all of these cases in the United States. Uh, here's so that there's a lot of historical ones. You can, of course, look these up. Moses Lake, Washington, February 1996. Pearl, Mississippi, October 1997. Paducah, Kentucky, December 97. Joan, uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas, March 98. Springfield, Oregon, May 21st. 98 and Littleton, Colorado, April 1999. Now, of course, we know that there are examples that are modern days that these things have happened. Um, there are still school shootings in America. N none of them recently have really been linked to video games because, you know, we debunked this shit nearly 20 years ago because it was fucking stupid. And it's now coming back because Nita Sarkeesian was called a bell end once on Twitter. In each of these cases, Satanism. Satanism. Nihilism, well, they would be nihilists, being as they are spree killers. And a fascination with violence and destruction figure predominantly. They're spree killers who murder people. Surprisingly enough, they're nihilistic and violent because they're murderers. They're fucking murderers. If you are a spree killer, you're a nihilist and you're fascinated by violence. That's just the pathology of a killer, you fucking cretin. Oh, this is so aged. In several and more notorious cases, addiction to video games, which has never been proven and never will be proven because it isn't a real thing outside of people with autism who could be addicted to watching ladybirds. And to nihilistically and graphically violent movies, such as Oliver Stone's Natural Born Killers. Yeah, again, Natural Born Killers. Good, good film. Good film. And, um... How has that influenced society over the last 15 years? How many, how many spree killers like that have existed? 
How many Mickey and Mallory Knoxes have you seen on the news? I imagine pretty much fuck all. Um, particularly because the media's been more concerned uh, about um, religious-based violence and acts of terrorism. Being as they tend to have killed more people. <sighs> We're major components of the lives of these children. Yet again, nihilists into... Uh, because they were psychopaths. They were psychopathic nihilists obsessed with violence. But that doesn't mean people who like violence in fiction are violent people. Correlation doesn't equal causation. Everybody who fucks dogs likes dogs. Not everybody who likes dogs fucks dogs. This is like basic IQ questions that children need to answer in order to get into a half-decent school. I mean, seriously. What the fuck? If your kid, if your ten-year-old didn't understand that, you would want to send them to a special school where they had windows that were cleaned with something that didn't taste bad. Because we spend it all day fucking licking them. I mean, seriously. This is, this is so dumb. This is so dumb, and that 15 years later, this has been trotted out into a UN paper. There is also the disturbing fact that three of the school shooters, Eric Harris of Littleton, Kip Kinkle, you call your kid Kip, I'm sorry, you were just in trouble, and Thomas J. Solomon, were among the more than six million children in the United States who were taking mind-altering drugs prescribed as a treatment. I'll stop you there. Now I'm debunking everything in your stupid fucking article. Okay. Six million children are on prescription medication at the time. Three got together to commit one atrocity. Now, maybe the other atrocities you listed, those kids were also medicated. Probably because they were all mentally ill. Do you see the point here? You have six million medicated mentally ill children 15 years ago. You certainly have more now. How many of them are committing crimes? What? Half a dozen out of six million? One per million? And you're telling me that that's a risk? If I were to say, I will offer you a million pounds, or dollars or whatever currency, I'll, I'll upscale it though because I'm not letting you fuck me on the exchange rate. If I were to say, there is a, this gun, there's a one million to one chance that there is a bullet in this gun and I will give you a million pounds to let me see if there's a bullet in there by aiming it and firing at your face. I imagine the majority of you would take that chance. Million to one. You know, this isn't the world of Pratchett where million to one shots turn out nine times out of ten. You would take that risk a million to one? I'd take that risk for a million, million to one shot. Most people probably would take a million to one shot. Because they've got 999,999 chances to a million of it coming out right. And one that it won't. The odds are massively stacked in your favour. To see half a dozen out of six million and go, holy shit, this is an epidemic. You're a fucking cretin. Moving on. It may well be the children on Ritalin, on Prozac, Lovox and other psychiatric drugs are walking human time bombs. Well, considering Ritalin has gone through the fucking roof with regards to prescription, the fact that in America is about the most medicated place on earth, so many children are medicated, how has the rates of violent crime gone again? In the last 20 years? I'll give you a hint. This is, this is, this is my little pictorial of the graph, okay? You stupid fucking twat. Nintendo killers. Now it's going to get fucking good. Mark my words. The very same video games that were originally designed to train soldiers to kill are those being mass marketed today to children! <laughs> um, this is the shocking fact. Fact, I'll have you know. Fact. Documented by Lieutenant Colonel David Grossman, an army psychologist who has specialised in the training of troops for combat. Grossman, who wrote an authoritative book on deadly force, on killing the psychological cost of learning to kill in war and society, has identified the essential part of playing video games in desensitising human beings to hurting, injuring and even killing others. I imagine you've been dealing with a lot of psychopaths because fantasy violence desensitises you 
to fantasy violence. It doesn't desensitize you to real world violence. I'm a big fan of fantasy violence. I enjoy it. I like the most ridiculously over the top violent gross shit imaginable. But you know what? Show me a video of someone breaking a finger and I don't want to watch that shit. On Killing was published in 1996, long before Littleton, but Grossman updated his study in the 1990 book called Stop Teaching Our Kids to Kill, co-authored by Gloria de Gattano. Stop Teaching Our Kids to Kill. In a particularly powerful chapter, because that's how propaganda works, by the way, Feel Something When You Kill, the authors reveal that the very Operant conditioning techniques, I like they put that in adverted commas to make it sound like it's accurate. Used by the military and police agencies in training their troops who are already willing to go and kill people because they've signed up to a job to risk their lives and commit acts of violence in the defence of their nation. Fuck me, these people are so stupid. Training their troops to kill without compunction are the basis for increasingly lucrative point and shoot video game industry. This is beyond fucking stupid. I feel like this is beneath even the people watching this to be going through it. But you know what? Since the UN saw fit to use this to essentially smear game industry and make gamers look like ticking time bombs of violence, I think it behooves us to go through this a little bit more. There are three things you need in order to shoot and kill effectively and efficiently. Grossman. and uh, No, no, she didn't write that. Grossman wrote that because he is the one training soldiers. For a soldier in Vietnam to an 11 year old in Jonesboro, anyone who does not have all three will essentially fail in any endeavour to kill. First, you need a gun. That is generally how shootings work. Next, you need the skill to hit a target with that gun. Yeah, well, blind luck, but yeah. And finally, you need the will to use that gun. And there we find the reason your argument is fucking stupid. The authors continue. Dear God, do they continue. Today's soldiers learn to fire at realistic man-shaped silhouettes that pop up in their field of vision. Mm-hmm. This simulated... In, look, look at it, look at it, look at it. They put it... They put it in inverted commas. <laughs> For reasons. For fucking reasons. They've done it. They've done it for... Fuck you for reasons. The trainee has only a split second to engage the target. The conditioned response is to shoot the target, and then it drops. Yeah, that is generally how these things work. Stimulus response. Stimulus response. Stimulus response. Repeat and I'll listen. Repeat and I'll listen. Repeat and I'll listen. I fucking won't. Soldiers and police officers experience hundreds of repetitions like this. And, you know... They're going out there with the express intention that they may have to shoot somebody, so yeah, they will. Later, when they're out on the battlefield or walking the beat, in some cases they now use... To be honest, in America, generally the police just use the phrase battlefield. I think just take the beat out there. It's a war. You know, they've got tanks and shit. You know, let's, let's be realistic. And someone pops up with a gun. Reflectively, they will shoot and shoot to kill. They will. They will. Especially if it, uh, even if it's small children with water pistols. Uh, because that's how, particularly in the you know, American police, are essentially trained like an armed force. And yes, of course, if you're out sweeping for IEDs and someone pops up with a stick and you shoot them in the face, that's not your fault. But here we go. Here's where it gets very, very funny. The author's punchline is this. It is a fucking punchline, I'll tell you that. Now these simulators are in our homes and arcades in the form of violent video games. Oh, video games. If you don't believe us, you should know that one of the most effective and widely used simulators used <laughs> by the United States Army in recent years, MACS, Multipurpose Arcade Sim Combat Simulator, is nothing more than a modified Super Nintendo game. In fact, it closely resembles the popular game Duck Hunt. Time Crisis. <laughs> oh Jesus fucking Christ the people were paid to write this people earned money doing this I want to make that very clear this is someone's life's work no isolated case 
In February 2000, two incidents came to the fore that made clear that Grossman was right and that Littleton was no isolated case. The first incident was the acquittal, acquittal of four New York City policemen who had killed an unarmed African man, Armando Di uh, Diallo. About a year earlier, on February 4, 1999, West African immigrant Diallo, a devout Muslim, 22 years old, with no criminal record, was gunned down without provocation by four policemen in New York City. The four officers from the Street Crimes Unit shot Diallo in the vestibule of a building at 12.40 a.m. You can see where they're going to go with this, can't you? You can see where this is going to go. I'm going to continue anyway, because it's fucking laughable. He was unarmed and offered no resistance. The police officers, who had been driving by in the car, noticed Diallo as he was entering his home. They stated that he believed that he was acting suspiciously. They were not wearing uniforms. One officer pulled up his badge and said, We'd like to have a word with you. Diallo continued to enter the vestibule of his building. At some point, he pulled out his wallet, apparently, in an attempt to identify himself. According to testimony from the four policemen, defendants, one officer yelled, GUN! 41 bullets were fired in 5 seconds, 19 of them hitting the target. Fucking hell, you were pretty close, that was some shit shooting. Within minutes, Armando Diallo was dead. No joke there, that's fucking sad. The officers were later acquitted of murder, setting off a wave of national protests. They have not violated the rules concerning the use of deadly force. They had reacted as if they were trained to react. They were perceived a threat, even if the threats did not exist. They had become Nintendo Killers. I think I'm having a stroke. The second incident was a killing of a six-year-old girl in Flint, Michigan, by her six-year-old classmate, an African-American boy, who was living at a crack house without even a bed to sleep on because his uncle who lived there was the only available adult to watch over him. The boy killed his classmate with one deadly shot from the gun he had stolen from the uncle. He had never fired a gun before, but he had played point-and-shoot video games. And, and those things are in no way connected. Boys tend to gravitate towards guns, and they also don't expect bullets to come out of it and people's heads to explode when they play with them. There's an expectation that it's fantasy because they are playing. Fuck. A strategy to defeat the new violence. The only national leader to identify the nature of the crisis and to pose a solution was economist and then candidate for the Democratic presidential nomination, Lyndon H. LaRoche. On March 3, in a dialogue with Hispanic American leaders, LaRoche said, we're getting killings which are caused by the use of Nintendo-style games. <laughs> Such as the game Pokemon, with children, and also with police and others. In the case of the Diallo shooting, they just linked Pokemon to police shooting an unarmed man in the dark when they thought he was pulling out a gun. Just thought I'd clarify that in case you were goldfish. The problem was that the mayor of New York, like many other officials, had been training the police in Nintendo-style killing techniques. So we have Nintendo killers. <laughs> Fucking kill me now. Pokemon! Pokemon! <sighs> Just shoot me in the fucking head. We're producing zombies from, from our students by this means, and by the use of Ritalin and other dangerous drugs in classrooms to try and control student populations. Maybe don't drug young boys who act exuberantly. Maybe teach them in a way that deals with their concentration issues in the first place. Engage the children. Don't drug them. Vilify them. Just fucking saying. I'm determined to do everything I can with my campaign and in other ways I don't know where the fuck going to be, to deal with this problem. We are faced with the kind of violence this nation cannot survive. It is almost the highest priority among all world issues. Yeah, you fucking heard that right. You fucking heard that right. The Pokemans, the Pokemans are training the police to kill people, and we have children who play the Pokemans, and that is the most important thing in the fucking world. You can see why this person didn't end up getting the presidency, can't you?
LaRouche called for the creation of a commission, a standing body of citizen leaders, against what he described as the new violence. After a highly successful and animated town meeting, I bet it was fucking animated, it was flailing around like a complete and utter spaz, which was broadcast via the internet. Just point that out. People wowed at that, I'm sure, back in 1999. It was broadcast on the internet. Over LaRouche's Democratic Party presidential campaign website last April. LaRouche issued a document defining the new violence. On May 8th, 2000, the National Commission Against the New Violence was founded, and LaRouche document was adopted as its founding principles. Beware the Pokemans. They may faint in your face. In three town meetings and several private workshops, participants in the discussions of the National Commission Against the New Violence have determined that there is nothing accidental about the new violence sweeping America, in which children are killing each other, killing their parents and killing themselves. Killer kids are created using Nintendo techniques. Animated violence is a multi-billion dollar business and its promotion is deliberate. You hear that? It's deliberate. Nin at this time, Nintendo, or I presume id Software, are in place specifically to train to kill, to make children into killers. That is what they implied. That isn't what, even what they implied, sorry. That's what they flat out fucking stated. That it's deliberate. That the industry is designed to create children that kill people. Fucking hell. In a presentation to a national conference for the Schilling Institute, February 20th, 2000, Helga Zeplerosch, LaRouche's wife and founder of the Institute addressed the issue in detail. Of course it was someone's fucking mum who's running this. Of course it is. I'm surprised they didn't just fucking start this article off with someone in a pinny saying, put your coat, take your coat off, you won't feel the benefit when you go outside. Fucking hell. Her speech titled, The Mark of the Beast, America's Children Are in Mortal Danger. Mortal Danger. Zeroed in on Pokemon. <laughs> oh my god. How can I fucking read through this? Fuck it, I'm gonna. I'm gonna fucking persist. I know this video's gonna go on. It's gonna be as long as balls. But I'm gonna fucking finish this. Even if I'm literally crying from fucking pain by the end of it. Jesus wept. To which children as young as two or three became addicted. She documented how Pokemon has been unestimated as a trigger of violence and an, <laughs> an instrument for desensitising children to violence because it's not a fucking factor. Video industry sued. A month later, the US Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation held hearings on the crisis. And Sabrina Steiger, a paediatric nurse, testified on video games and violence. Steiger is not just any witness, she is the mother of Case Steiger, one of three students killed at Heath High School in Paducah, Kentucky in December 1st, 1997, by 14-year-old Michael Carneal. As Steiger said, I am the person you do not want to be. I live a parent's worst nightmare. Right, all jokes aside, I feel very sorry for this woman. That's awful. Her kid's been killed by a mental person. That's really, really sad. But it doesn't make you an expert and your profession is irrelevant. You know nothing about the cause. You just know that you're hurting. And that sucks, and I'm not going to laugh at that because that's fucking horrible. So let's move on. Steiger is also suing the top games of the violence industry. She is a plaintiff in the suit against the makers, designers, and distributors of killer video games that Carnell used. Steiger explained to the Senate, eight shots fired, eight children hit in the upper chest, neck, or head. Case, Jessica, and Nicole died that day. One of the first indicators of media influence is that none of his shots missed. Because reasons. Because he had the hand-eye coordination to move a cursor into the middle of the screen and click a button, that means he could aim a gun. Yeah, that sounds fucking logical, doesn't it? We only know one time prior that the killer practiced with the gun he used to commit murder. You only know of one time. And so what? So what if, it, what if he was a natural? What if he picked up the gun first time? Wow, this is really easy. I'm a mental case. I'm going to go shoot some people. It may have just been that simple. I don't think... Well, I, I know. People are not made into nut jobs by video games. That's just a fact. You just have to live with that. You have to live with your loss and realise that the cause is dangerously deluded and psychotic people. A recent case in the news involved a man shot at close range by police officers. The New York case of Armando Diallo. 
Of the 41 shots they fired, 19 hit the victim. It was it was dark and they were further away, I imagine. Less than half the shots fired by trained policemen hit the target, but 100% of those fired by a teenager hit the student in the kill zone. The fact that the shooter used the most effective methods for shooting, one shot per victim. You don't need a video game to know you shoot someone in the chest or head is the best way to kill them. And also, arguably if he was an efficient killer, he'd probably go in and double tap them in the head, you know, because that's what professionals do. A day later on March 22nd, ABC TV's news magazine 2020 aired a 15 minute segment featuring Jack Thompson. Yes. Oh yes. Oh yeah, but I knew this was going to happen. I knew we were going to get to this bit. This is why it's so fucking juicy. This is why I'm reading the whole thing. Because this shit is fucking priceless. An attorney, not anymore, you fucking ain't. For Steger and other Paducah parents for the suit. It also featured Lieutenant Colonel David Grossman from before, Army, Army psychologist, who proves the role of the video games in training killers and desensitising the users to violence. He, he's proved that he's used it to train killers to kill people. Or train people who are willing to become killers to kill people. That doesn't mean it's making other people into killers. This is why the case. This is why the case failed, and this is why you're all really fucking stupid. The 2020 segment also showed that the video game industry is counter-attacking, using the FBI as their defence. The fucking bastards. Interviewed on the show, the current unnamed chief executive officer of ID Software. He's not, uh, he wasn't unnamed, you just couldn't be fucking asked to check. Makers of Doom and Quake had a ready-made line. FBI statistics allegedly show that violent crime has fallen for the past five years. Fuck me! What a ridiculous defence that is! Less people are dying due to violent crime. Those fucking lying bastards. They're doing this to murder kids, you know. This is what they do. That's 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 why. That's why John Romero and John Carmack worked on those uh, in the game in the first place. That's when they released Doom as freeware. The episode one as freeware. Because they, they wanted loads of children to go out and murder people. That's totally the case. There's not enough whiskey in the world for this shit. While the video game industry has grown to a 7 billion a year enterprise. More now, bitch! Even bigger than the movies. 2020 and id Software CEO insists that it's the right of free speech to make products as violent as the user wants. Their free speech argument is the same one used by advocates of drug legalisation. I see what you did there, by the way. I see that, you sneaky little fucker. I see that you're trying to conflate something that is legal with something that is illegal and saying that the two are true. That's a stupid, faulty assertion. That's like saying, people who have consensual sex have sex. Rapists have sex. Hey, hey, there's a link there. There's a link there because because they both share a characteristic. Therefore, they are the same. Fucking dipshits. Ban point shoot games. I so fucking wi I, I point shoot games. As we all know, they're you know they'd been better off with just saying FPS, but you know. They were all in the past, back with floppy disks and shit. They didn't know what they were talking about. In April 2000... <laughs> April 2000 interview. Jesus fucking Christ. It's occurred to me some people are going to watch this while they're not even born or toilet trained by the time this came out. Which makes me feel incredibly old, so thanks for that. Fuck, fuck you, young people. And you fucking not being alive when I was alive. You pricks. In an April 2000 interview with Executive Intelligence Review magazine... Attorney Thompson assured that the violence associated with the point-shoot video games is not a free speech issue, and that it can be stopped. Uh, it is, and it can't. Instead of more conferences to discuss the violence, he said, the President should simply direct the Product Safety Commission to ban them because they are dangerous. We're not Jack Thompson. We don't hate video games. Yeah, you fucking do, you bunch of chodes with no brains. Spider-Man. In May 1999, within weeks of the Littleton Massacre, Executive Intelligence Review, EIR magazine, published a grisly report of the violent video games that are turning children into programmed killers. I bet you felt really clever when you put programmed in there. But you felt fucking amazing when you're like, yeah, programmed, because video games are programmed. And so when they're coding, they're coding the game, they're also coding the little children's brains. That's very, very clever. That's very good. 
you know. Shakespeare worthy. Really, really, truly is. Congratulations. Stupid fucking twat. Drawing on the expertise of individuals such as uh, fucking Lieutenant Colonel David Grossman again. The report exposed that the fact that video games are specifically used by the utopian faction in the US military to desensitise individuals to violence and killing, and they serve as murder simulators in training programmes. Do you find it interesting that they only have one source for all of this shit? One source. Fascinating, isn't it? EIR's lead in exposing the video game industry, exposing it for the criminal fucks that they are. Just one branch of the Hollywood violence empire. <laughs> oh, the Hollywood violence empire. I am going to need more whiskey. Was followed a year later by several significant initiatives by the Federal Trade Commission and by leading public health professional associations to make public the video violence that is... And it's casual and it's causal. Sorry, sorry, Freudian slip. Not casual, causal connection. Although it is a casual connection. And it is not actually a connection. It is a casual correlation. Fucking twats. To aggressive behaviour. There are some studies with regards to increase in aggression when you're playing video games. But that's because your brain is firing up because you're enjoying a stimulus. That is not the same as desensitizing you to violence or making you aggressive in the real world because people shout and scream when they get camped in COD does not mean they're about to go out and kill somebody. That's faulty fucking bullshit and shitty, shitty, shitty psychology. These initiatives may be the basis, finally, for outlawing the video game murder simulators. Fucking hell. On July 26, 2000, leaders of the American Psychological Association, the American Academy for Pediatrics, the American Academy for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, and the American Medical Association issued a joint statement on the impact of entertainment violence on children, which said... You'll like this. This is fucking funny. At this time... Well over a thousand studies, including reports from the Surgeon General's Office, the National Institute of Mental Health, and numerous studies conducted by leading figures within our medical and public health organisations, our own members, point overwhelmingly to a causal connection between violent media and aggressive behaviour in some children. The statement noted that this is the conclusion of the public health community, based on more than 30 years of research. Did you see that? Did you see that? It makes some kids aggressive. Which is, of course, no link to actual violence. This is the basis for their argument. I swear to Christ, all these people, all of the people who even nearly 20 years later are still making these bullshit fucking arguments, are making the argument on the grounds that video games make some people feel aggressive. That, that's literally the breadth and depth of their argument. That is their data. Isn't it fucking laughable? One of the studies referenced appears in April 2000 issue of the Journal of Personality and Social Behaviour. It is titled, Video Games and Aggressive Thoughts, Feelings and Behaviour in the Laboratory and in Life, by Dr. Craig A. Anderson from Iowa State University of Science and Technology and Dr. Karen E. Dill of the Leonore Ryan College. The two studies described in the article say that playing violent video games such as Doom, Wolfenstein 3D or Mortal Kombat can increase aggressive thoughts, feelings and behaviour, both in laboratory settings and in natural life. Aggressive thoughts, feelings, and behaviour. Not commit violence. See how they cloak this shit in bullshit terminology and then try and get you to conflate the two because they're disingenuous, lying fuckheads. The violent video games present a unique danger, the authors note, for three reasons. First, because the player identifies with the aggressor and, in fact, in first-person video games, assumes the identity of the hero. Uh, often. Second, because the active participation of the player in choosing, often again and again, to act in an aggressive and violent manner. And third, because the games are addictive, in inverted commas, in inverted commas, because it is not actually proven to be addictive in any way, shape or form. Just saying. Providing a perfect paradigm for the induction of addictive behaviour. On September 11, 2000, the Federal Trade Commission issued a report called Marketing Violent Entertainment to Children, which reviewed the motion picture, music recording and electronic games industry. The FTC concluded that these industries deliberately and intentionally market extremely violent material to children as young as six years old, violating their own self-regulatory codes. 
Okay, I'm going to skip the next two bits because video-induced epilepsy is a thing and even though it's the shortest thing they've covered in the whole thing, it is something that the video game industry has adopted and has helped prevent people who have epilepsy from having seizures because certain flashing images, of course, happen with cartoons, films, all sorts. Epilepsy warnings, you've seen them everywhere. The next section, the next section, drugging babies with the laughable statement of drugging babies. I mean, we are talking about adolescents here. Uh, in some cases, young kids. But, um, yeah, we've already had this conversation. Lots and lots of people are medicated. Some people are medicated for being psychotic. Some people who are psychotic commit violent acts. Not everybody who is psychotic or takes medication, commit violent acts. We've had this discussion already, there's no point. Let's move on to the conclusion. The challenge. The new violence is a question of national security. Can a nation survive when the cultural view becomes predominant that man is just another beast? In the Roman Empire, gladiators ripped human beings to shreds, while tens of thousands of spectators cheered. Today, in the information age, this beastliness takes on other forms, which there is still time to stop. Michelle Steinberg is a research staff in the Executive Intelligence Review and is a member of the Commission Against the New Violence. Fun little disclaimer at the end there where they go, yeah, oh, by the way, I actually work for the people who proposed this stupid shit in the first place. I mean, you could put that at the beginning and no one would have bothered reading it, but by the time you got to the end, people probably would have just ignored that. The, the credulous fuckwits who believe this shit would have just ignored the fact that you're writing that with a massive fucking agenda. But this is it. This is the fucking bombshell. This is the sort of shit, because you can guarantee this information came from either an Itsukizen or someone like her. Look at these people. We don't hate video games, we don't want them banned, but we're going to latch on to stupid fucking articles from discredited data, from pointless fucking individuals who are not in the public eye, mentioning, you know, referencing a disbarred lawyer who was a complete and utter shit heel. This is where we are. Here comes the new boss, same as the old boss. These people are a cancer and they just can't leave people the fuck alone. People who want to do stuff that they don't want to do. They are desperate to take things away from us. Well, fuck you. I will fight you tooth and nail. Because you know what? Video games don't really matter in the sense that I need them. I've got enough video games. Trust me, I've got fucking thousands of the bastards. I am in no risk. I'll be video games from now and the day I die. No problem. So you can't come take my video games away because I've got loads. But what I will do is fight you tooth and nail on fucking principle. Because you're wrong on principle. You follow an ideology that is wrong. And it curtails human creativity and our social evolution. Puritans are always in the wrong in these times. They are. Prohibition is fucking wrong. These worry warts, these whinging fucking soccer mums, all of them, they have no business dictating what creatives and what people who are perfectly adult and sane enough to enjoy entertainment can do what the fuck we want you leave us alone. I don't tell you how to be a miserable prick. You don't tell me how to play my video games. Deal? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you guys later.